Morning video on Twine 2.6. In this video, I'm going to talk about creating, accessing, and changing the values of variables using macros in Harlow 3.3. Harlow is a programming language. This means it provides something common to all programming languages, the manipulation of data. So when we're talking about changing data, we often apply a label to that data, which we call a variable. That includes the name of the variable and the data it holds. So when we talk about variables within Harlow, we need to make sure we're differentiating, make a difference of kind of two different types of variables. So we can have one type of variable that when we create it exists for the entire length of a story, and we can have a different type of variable, a temporary variable, that only lasts until the next passage is loaded. Now, those two types are important, but for the most part, we're going to lean pretty heavily on story variables. Now, story variables start with the dollar sign within Harlow. This designates something is a variable. Now, Harlow is itself built on another programming language called JavaScript that has a much longer history and is connected to other programming languages. The reason why I mention this influence is because Harlow is influenced by the variable naming rules of JavaScript, which include the following. Variable names can include letters, both upper and lower case. It can contain numbers. It can contain the underscore, but no other special symbols. And it cannot contain spaces. So let's go ahead and see what a variable looks like. So I have a passage pulled up right here. And let's write a variable called example. And then we have a use of a variable right here. And again, as a quick review, notice it starts with a dollar sign. This signals we're using a variable within Harlow, and it has a name, and in this case, all lowercase letters. Potentially, if I wanted to, I could use uppercase letters, but I can't use other special symbols other than the underscore. And again, this is the influence of another programming language, JavaScript, on which Harlow is built. Okay, well... Naming variables is all well and good, but what do we actually do with these? Well, I mentioned at the start of this video that we can use them as kind of labels for data. We can kind of think of them in terms of buckets. That is, we can create a bucket, and we can also look into the bucket, and then we can also change what's inside that bucket as well. So we have a variable right here, but we're not really doing anything with it. In order to create a variable, we need to use something else in Harlow, a different concept called macros. Now, many years ago, when Twine was first created, the idea of a macro was also created along with the tool. In Harlow, this idea gets extended a little bit. So a macro is any time we want to use sort of more advanced programming within Harlow, we use these different things called macros. And within Harlow, they're defined in a special way using a certain set of symbols. So, for example... This is an example of a macro. Notice it has an opening parentheses and a closing parentheses, and when we use it within Harlow 3.3, it also color codes it for us. It says, oh, I understand this is a macro I am aware of. Notice we have the macro set right here. Now, set is a particularly important macro because sometimes we want to create or change the value of variables. So to do that, we need to use set right here. Notice the little Full tip. So this is a call to the set macro. It produces commands, so it should appear in passage code without being connected to a hook. What's important to us, though, is the second bit. Stores data values in variables. So we need the name of the variable. Again, remembering our naming rules. Contain letters, uppercase and lowercase. Can contain numbers. Can use the underscore, but can't use any other special characters or special symbols. Can't use spaces. Most of the time, we tend to stick towards uppercase and lowercase letters just to kind of avoid confusion and without messing with those other rules. Okay. So we create a variable by giving it some data. Again, thinking about the metaphor bucket, right? We create a bucket and has something in it. And even if it's just empty, we create it with something. So we want to go ahead and set a variable to something. Now, I purposely phrased it that way in English, set variable to value, is because that's the kind of English phrasing that the set macro wants you to use within a Harlow. We set variable based on its name, to something. And I'm very particularly invoking the English word to, T-O, because that's what Harley wants me to use. Set example to, the English word to, and then some value. And right here, the number of values and types of values we can use within Harlow is heavily influenced by JavaScript. This is just one of a number of different situations where, because Harlow is based on JavaScript, it kind of is influenced by the other programming language. Now, there are many different 
kinds of data we could put in here, whole numbers, decimal numbers, and many, many other things. Just for simplicity's sake, though, let's go ahead and set this to 1. So we can set example to 1, and exactly as I phrased in English, set example to 1. So we've now created a variable, example, notice a little dollar sign, it clues us in this is a variable, and we're setting it to the number 1, and notice the kind of color coding is helping us with understanding this. So we can create variables. Now let's kind of move through that list I proposed, creating, accessing, and changing. So we can create a variable, what happens if we want to access it? So let's go ahead and access it. So I purposely wrote example kind of outside of any macro usage when I started this video to get it used to get us used to seeing that in a pattern. So I can write that the value is example. Okay, so let's go ahead and play from here. So we go over to build. Let's go over to play. It says the value is one. Okay, cool. So we initially, right here at the top of this passage, created a variable, then we accessed the value of that variable. Now, the order of things in which they happen within Harlow is very important. If I reverse this, we will see different things. So I'm going to go ahead and put this below this. So we're going to attempt to access the value of a variable before it is created. And we can do this, it's just not a good idea. So let's go ahead and play. And we'll notice the value is zero. Well, in cases where we attempt to do something we probably shouldn't do, Arlo is going to protect us by setting a default value of zero. It's not a good idea to depend on this because it might change in a future version, but it will prevent any major issues and just assume a default value of zero. But that's not what we want. What we want instead is we want to create the value of the variable. So we create a variable using the set macro. We can access a variable right here, just in text, but again, using the name of the variable, paying attention to that dollar sign right there. And then the third I mentioned, we want to change the value of a variable. Well, we change the value of a variable in the same way we create the value of a variable. So back to the metaphor of a bucket, right? We are creating a bucket. Here is a bucket of stuff and we put something in it. We can then access what's inside that bucket. And then third, we want to change what's inside that bucket. Well, we create and we change using the same macro, set. So, okay, we want to change this value to something else. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And let's move this next because, again, remember the order is important. And I want to set this to 1 plus its current value. Well, there's an additional English word we can use when we work with the set macro within Harlow, and that is the word it. So I'm going to write plus set it to it plus 1. And what is it? Well, it right here is a shorthand for the leftmost part of an operation. In other words, it is the variable itself. So I said, hey, based on the existing value of example, set it to whatever it is, plus one. So we start with one, and then we end up with plus one. So if we repeat this, again, paying attention to the order, then we're going to notice something a little different. One and then two. Notice the order is important, how these things are processed, top to bottom. Okay, so let's revisit what I've done here. We create variables using the set macro. Notice the little dollar sign clues us in that this is a variable. It's also a story-wide variable. I mentioned towards the beginning of this video the kind of two different types of variables, story and temporary. We don't really use temporary that often. There are some particular cases where it's more useful. Generally, we're using story variables with the little dollar sign. And when we saw that when I had it highlighted, it said, oh, this is a story variable. What does that mean exactly? Well, let's look at this. Let's say I want to create a link to another passage right here, literally another passage. And then over in this other passage, I want to use the value of a variable. I can do that very easily. I will copy this. Let's open this one up and paste. And then over here, I have the value of example. Well, I created it over here and I'm accessing it over and another. So if we play, we go over to another, we see the value is 2. Notice the order is important. It changed at the end of the start passage. When we pulled it up, right here, we set it to 1. We set it to it plus 1, increase the value. 
And then we went to another passage and it changed it to two. Right here, we saw two and then another passage, it was two. So the order in which we do these things is important. And once we create a story-wide variable, we can access it across any other passages that we might need it. And this is a very useful part of creating, accessing, and updating variables. Now, let's conclude this video by looking at one other macro that's incredibly important when we work with variables. And that is, sometimes we get ourselves in a situation where we want to compare the value of the variable, whatever's in that bucket, with something else. We want to know, hey, is health less than 100, or have you collected a key, or any number of other things. To do this, what we want to do is we want to use a macro called if. The if macro creates a comparison. So I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of this right now. And what I want to do is I want to create a comparison, and if a certain comparison is true, then I want to do something. Now, the if comparison is true, English phrasing is important because computers are built on binary systems and zeros and ones. It needs to know if this is something that's true or this is something that's false, right? Is it zero or is it one? So we create comparisons to help computers understand that. Is one less than 100? Is one equal to zero? And then we can understand this as either true or false, zero or one, right? As we understand this kind of binary setup. So we use the if macro to create these comparisons. So if right here, and then I need to compare something, compare one thing to another thing using something in the middle, some sort of symbol. Now we have a number of different ways we can approach this within Harlow. We can make different comparisons. We can check to see if something is something else, if something is not something else, if something is less than something, if something is greater than something, greater than or equal to, a large number of kind of different comparisons we can take. Let's start, though, by doing something that's less. So, I'm interested. Is the value that's within the variable example less than 10? If it is, do something. And we'll kind of do something right here. So what I want this to do is say, hey, go ahead and create the variable example, set it to 1. Then if the value that's within the example, again, thinking about looking in that bucket, is less than 10, show this right after here. So if we play this, we'll see, show this, because it is. It is less than 10. Okay, well, what if it was greater than 10? Okay, well, let's play this. It didn't show it, because it's not true. So we're creating comparisons that evaluate to true. Is this expression true? Is example greater than 1, less than 10, whatever we're trying to create. Now, let's say we're trying to figure out if something is equal or not. So this is a little bit different in Hartlow. Harper uses the English word is. So we're interested in is. If example is one, so if it is this exact thing, show this. And it is. But what if we wanted to know if it is not? Well, we saw that right here, is not. So if it is not one, show this. And that's not true, and so that doesn't work. And so we understand now that we can start to use the if macro along with the set macro to Create more complex stories. We can create variables using the set macro, understanding that the rules and naming of variables is based on another language called JavaScript, which we don't need to understand other than its influence here. And then we can see that we use the dollar sign to indicate a variable within Harlow. We can set the value of a variable to some number using the English word to. And then we can create comparisons using the if macro, using is or is not, those English words, to create various comparisons we might want to use. Throughout all of this, we can start to embrace more programming knowledge interacting with Harlow, which we already understand as a programming language itself, to create more complex stories and start to build greater interactions within Harlow 3.3. Thanks for watching.